Russia overnight launched an all-out invasion of Ukraine. The biggest attack by one European state against another since World War II. When we first started getting reports that Russia was invading Ukraine, we knew it was going to trigger an extensive and protracted humanitarian crisis. Our first response was, let's get in touch with our existing network on the ground to see how we can support their efforts. How do you want to approach this? They do have operations on the ground and we can support them with in-kind donations and they've confirmed transportation from the border into Ukraine. My job is logistics. My job is to get these supplies to those in need immediately wound care items, hygiene items, PPE, but also chronic care medications. How fast we're getting this stuff out is important because every minute matters. The supplies could be the last one that we get in there. I just want to be able to maximize the amount of lives that we can protect. I think there's no more challenging environment just to help people than war. We're fairly accustomed to natural disasters, which often break down distribution channels and roads and bridges. The big difference is everyone in a natural disaster is trying to correct those and open those channels up. Whereas in war, as we're seeing now, there's a concerted effort to shut them down. I mean, two weeks ago, there was a delivery of cancer therapies arrived in Kyiv, and now it's like mass trauma, mass casualty. What can we provide? Targeting hospitals and civilians, that's unusual for us. Syria was the closest analog, but there have been as many refugees from Ukraine in 10 days as there were in 10 years of war in Syria. The communications have been compromised. The internet was blocked, reportedly by the Russian government. That really stalls matters when you're trying to get very specific locations or drop-offs. Everybody wants to help, but that's why we need someone like your organization so that we know who to call. I don't think the material is going to be the issue. There's 70 pallets leaving today. We're getting asked for a lot of these supplies that are just for trauma care. It's just such large scale, large populations, different types of injuries. I think people feel helpless and so luckily I have so much work to do. I'm just head down, make good decisions on behalf of those that we serve. There's a strong sense of purpose. I think everyone's connected. And it's helpful at times like this when it would be otherwise just watching these horrors unfold passively and being unable to do anything. If you do it right, someone's life is going to be better. The stakes of directly getting it right are very high, just it's the nature of what we do. We have these tools and we really need them now. If we have an opportunity, we take it. Our hospital for now is the only hospital in Ukraine who can manage with cardiosurgical patients because all the hospitals in Kyiv are being evacuated and that's why all the patients uh, are coming here. In normal times, very often we have lack of different medications and for now it's even worse because many, many patients are coming here from other hospitals, but also we have a lot of patients from refugees which are in Lviv now. We are refugees from Kharkiv because it's very dangerous in our city now. In the first day of the war, me and my wife come to the shelter with our uh, little child. He only seven months, so it's not possible to live a long time in, in the shelter. It's really difficult for them because they came here just they and the child. They were able to take nothing with them. It's amazing that people would like to help us. Really, I am very happy because we are getting a lot of medications we just have for the first time. Uh, but nobody knows for how long it will last. Very soon the stuff will be used. To 
tell the truth, nobody planned the war. War came and ruined our plans. There's a much larger unfolding situation that no one fully has their arms around. So looking at war being kind of the embodiment of our species at its worst, but there is a countervailing force that's also deeply ingrained of people wanting to help those less fortunate.